Whoa, what was that? I saw somebody do that on a live stream yesterday. Very nice I get a private concert from Maury Rooch on a Monday afternoon. Today is March 29th, 2021. Welcome. And we're discussing a very cool guitar today, and we've got lots to say about it. I've actually owned one of these. This is a Martin CEO 7, and I actually purchased one about a year or two ago from Maury's Music in Coldale, Pennsylvania, and that's the truth. So I have lots to say about this guitar, and I have to say it sounded really great in the intro. Let's bring on that fantastic player, Maury Rooch. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's not quite the same. There we go. <laughs> I'll play for you any Monday, buddy. Well, that guitar looks great and it sounds even better. What do you think in the chat? Let's jump over to the chat and say hi to our friends that are here. Eric is here. Hi, welcome, Eric. One of my favorites, fun to play. Very cool. The one and only Spoon Phillips says hi, everybody. Old says CEO7 in the house. <laughs> Chris Hull, greetings. Hi everyone, we're getting blown around out here in upstate New York. Is it windy up there? I haven't been outside today. How is Coldale today? Is it is it Coldale or is it Warmdale? It's it's Mildale. It's pretty nice out <laughs> there. Oh Chris, yes. Is this the guitar from the movie yesterday? Yes, it is. And that's a good movie. I watched that movie. And this is the guitar that the lead actor plays. Have you seen yesterday the movie, Maury? I have it. I'd liked it too. I thought it was very good. Yeah. I'm trying not to give a spoiler. I like what happens towards the end. I almost said My it. My favorite part when they <laughs> yeah. I, don't, I won't do that. I almost ruined the whole thing for everybody. Mm -hmm. Bill, welcome. Central Indiana. Very cool. Lee is here sniffing his sound hole. Hi, Aaron, Maury, and everyone in the chat. It's awesome that he's wearing a sound hole sniffer shirt in his picture, isn't it? I like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Jack Wickwire. Spring is springing in Maryland. Oh, Old's got the sound hole sniffer mug and stickers. Stickers came out great. I'll email pics when I get a chance. Thank you, Olds, because I, when I was designing the shirt and the mug, I was ordering like uh, samples. I went through quite a lot of them. <laughs> a bunch of, I've got like a shirt for every day though, slightly different. But I never ordered the stickers and you're the first person to order the stickers. So I'm glad they came out nice. And I think they'd be cool actually to put on your guitar case or something. So yeah, please do share some photos. That'd be great. Thank you for your business. Uh, no time to email you now. Busy watching this awesome YouTube channel. Oh, please, <laughs> please send us a link so we can watch as well. That would be, that'd be great. <laughs> Patsy and Bernard watching from sunny Suffolk, UK. The weather is varying around the world. Huh. Jim says, hi there, everyone, from VT. Spoon says, fancy. I think that was the key change. Jim says, hello, from Quaker Town, PA. Maury, why not try an Aaron Short original in a different key? Did you see what he did yesterday? That was pretty awesome. <laughs> in case, just to share our in-joke, I was live yesterday doing my Sunday concert, 4 p.m. EST, and I played uh, some Maury chords. Why did I change the key? There was Something happened. I can't think why I did that. There was you some reason. You were a cover of something, and I think you made a comment that you weren't ready for the key change, and then my song took the brunt of it. You did some song... And you played it perfectly, and you played it reverently, and you, and you cared about it. 
and you, you found a, re, a way to say, well, that wasn't really the key change. I should have done a key change. Then you took one of my songs and you did. <laughs> and seven or eight <laughs> modulations later, it sounded like, like somebody's car radio was spinning you know, through <laughs> traffic. And uh, of course, it was my music that, that got, you know, got wrecked, but that's okay. I, I got big shoulders. I can deal with it. I thought you'd be you know, happy that I played your song on the show. I thought it was like I, a, a tribute. At the beginning, I was very happy. Then when I saw what you did to it. <laughs> Rosanna is here. Happy Monday, Aaron and Maury and everyone in the chat. Did you learn Rosanna for Rosanna? Just a little piece of it, but I don't oh, know. What... Don't give me a copyright strike. Jim says, sweet. Marco says, hi all, nice evening. Roweth, hi all watching from Cleveland. Excited to hear more about the CEO7. Did you just get that CEO7 from the Martin factory? Great question. Uh, this time last week. It's been here mm. about six days. Yep. Mm. And Ricardo, hi, welcome to our show. I got a new M ought, 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 ought. Haven't been able to put it down. Very nice. If you're new here, please do subscribe and ring the bell. We go live every Monday, 4 p.m. EST. And we have other videos as well, which I'll tell you about later on. Roweth says, can you order... He's, he's straight in with the hard questions here. Can I order a custom CEO7? I'm not a fan of the sunburst finish. <gasps> and cream tuning buttons. So he wants yes, a CEO7 can. with a different finish, different tuners, different bracing, different woods, different neck profile, different body shape. <laughs> <laughs> But the same name, right? Yeah, you, you can, <laughs> Roweth. And, and I, I do believe some other, other dealers may have done that in the past where uh, mm. I, I forget who did what, but I think I've seen some things in circulation where it was a, maybe a CEO7 with rosewood and or a CEO7 with uh, mahogany, but a, a natural top. So it can be done. That's good to know. I, I was under the impression they wouldn't do that, but I've got some more questions about a custom CEO7 later on. Jim says that, oh yeah, da, 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 da. BMO, hi. BMO, I've got to just throw this in here. And um, a friend of mine, my, well, a friend of mine is selling his retro guitar, his HD28 retro. And I was, I was this interested in getting it, but I'm not going to. <laughs> but I thought of BMO when I had that conversation. Spoon Phillips, yes, Roweth, there have been many customs ordered based on the CEO7. Oh, this is great. I'd like to investigate that some more. Stephen, welcome. What is the neck profile and bridge size on the CEO7? We'll get to that in a, right now after these comments. We're going to get to the, the specs. So just bear with me a few minutes and we'll cover that soon. Robert says, th says thanks, Spoon. Jim, I have the same view of the cosmetics. The Mod V neck is also a non-starter for me. Well, we'll discuss all this. I actually like the look of it. The tuners, yes, I might agree with you, but we'll get into that. Chris Hull says, but he loves Addy Tops. I mean, who doesn't love an Addy Top? <laughs> Spoon says it's short scale, one three going nut. Uh, sold it. Okay, we're going to move on to the specs in a second. Bimo says you want mine. Oh, it depends, Bimo. You know, it depends what you've done to it. Is there any scratches on there? Lars says seems like one of Martin's best for finger picking. Nice specs. Let's jump over to the specs now and check it out. Let me go over to the website one second. Because I think this is a good place to start. There we go. We've got the new Martin site here, which you can't see because we're covering it up. Apologies. Let me see if I can move this around. Kind of, yeah, okay, yeah. I prefer the old site, but this wasn't the problem then. Um, we have, okay, 0014 fret, slope shoulder. A dovetail neck joint, as we would expect. X-braced, scallop bracing, Addy top. Now, I think a lot of us like the Addy top, don't we? Maybe Spoon can tell us what the benefits of an Addy top would be in the chat, and I'll read it out. The back is mahogany, so it's a mahogany guitar, and the sides are also mahogany. There's no electronics, but they are always optional. Also, Maury can also install electronics at his store as an, as an optional extra. The top is gloss, the back and sides are gloss. It's 24.9 scale length and one and three quarter inch nut. Now here's the thing, the next shape is a modified V. We'll come to that next. I've got some pictures to show you, and it's got the standard taper. Okay, let's see if we see, see anything else here that kind of jumps out at me. There's the string spacing. Brace size, quarter inch. Um, 
Nothing else there. The neck is satin finish. Okay. And the tuners are cream plastic. We'll take a we'll take a closer look at those. And it's a pre-printed label. Oh, numbered in sequence without a total. Okay, let's address this. And it's plect, which I which I I'm, big, I'm a big fan of. Maury, first of all, before I get you to play something else for us, the CEOs the CEO guitars were really like really like a Nam show one-off special, right? But this guitar's been around for a long time. Can you remember when this was introduced to the lineup? Ooh, I was afraid you might ask me that. Um, <laughs> I wasn't afraid enough to research it, but I, I want to say it's at least six years ago now. Yeah, it's been um, a long time, a long time. Yeah, so why it, is it still available? Why can we still get this? That's what's what's funny about it. Uh, to your point, you know, the CEO 3 came and went. When the CEO 4 came out, they did away with the 3. When the 5 came out, they did away with the 4. This guitar came out, and I don't necessarily know if I can speak for most people, but I would imagine... The, the buying public saw this as a very, very inexpensive way to get a standard series level instrument from Martin with an Adirondack top, mahogany back and sides. And it might be okay to say now because it's so, it's so long ago, I think it was underpriced. I think if you looked at other guitars and what you paid to get mahogany over Sitka, getting mahogany, uh, getting Adirondack over mahogany in this instrument, uh, really, it, it made almost everybody say, is that, the rep is that price right? And it was so popular uh, I remember ordering five or six at a time, and we would sell maybe two or three of them. We'd order six more. Then we'd sell three or four of those. We'd order ten more, and we kept laughing, Lori and I. Like, when are we gonna? Order? One of these days, we're gonna order way too many CEO sevens, and this bubble's gonna pop. It's it's gonna be old news. It still has not happened that way. This guitar has been such a lifelong. The life of this guitar has been so consistently popular. Um, only this the recent 2020. Uh, nonsense that's slowing all the instruments down has slowed its sales it's it's if if things were still at peak production uh this guitar without a doubt is one of our best sellers uh consistently it doesn't have high points and low points there isn't a stretch of time where people aren't into this instrument it's just very popular and i think it's really just priced right and it's it's a great design that's that's priced a little bit less than maybe many people would expect Lars says, seems like one of Martin's best for finger picking. Yeah, before we discuss the neck profile, let's hear some finger picking if you wouldn't mind. Sure. Nice mug. <laughs> <laughs> I have one too. <laughs> It really, uh, tell me if you agree in the chat, it sounds excellent, like across all the, like it's no, and there's no weirdness, it's like kind of bright and clear and punchy. And and I like I said, I own one, I felt exactly the same. The projection in the room is, um, is amazing, which you don't really hear on this stream. And for such a small size body, I mean, I, maybe, maybe people don't realize how small that guitar is. Can you just hold it up, Maury, to show us the size of it? It's yep. a very small body guitar, but it really projects. And I assume that would be the, the Addy Top. There's not VTS on this, right? Nope. So it's just that Addy Top projects really well. And I like it because it looks classy, but it looks different. It doesn't look like your typical Martin. The reason I don't have one anymore is the neck profile. And I've got a really good article here from the most recent Martin Journal, which shows us the neck shapes. Now, here's the thing. I'll, you know, I'll say this. If you like a modified V, which is the one in the bottom left, then you're going to love this guitar. I really believe that. But I know this is quite a, a big topic for people. And, and tell us in the chat, and we'll, we'll focus on this for a little while because this is important. What neck do you gravitate towards? And what's your preference? 
In fact, let me ask the chat, is there anyone here that that enjoys the modified V-neck, like the big chunky V-neck? Is that your preference? I thought you didn't, Maury. Oh no, you do, your guitar has that, doesn't it? Your personal guitar has the modified V-neck, right? It does, but if, if I'm being honest, okay. now that I've played that for 20 some years, and I've played so many, you know, standard series Martins come through the shop, I think I do like the newer Martin feel a little bit better, but I have come to get comfortable with that out of being familiar with it. Let's take a look. So this is the different profiles here. So the standard series, which I'm a big fan of, of course, I always say that, is going to be the modified low oval. That's on the top right of the screen. Now this is a really great graphic because it shows you the actual measurements as well. Okay, so you can see that shape. I love that shape. I find that incredibly comfortable. And then if you look to, to the, the right next to me, the low profile, I think that's the OMJM, which is even thinner. And I actually find that really comfortable as well. So you can see it's pretty close, but it's a little bit on the thinner side. And below that is that modified V. So it really is quite a chunky neck, and it is the biggest one on there, isn't it? I'm just looking around. It's 0.757 at the thickest point. And I think whenever we talk about this guitar or these necks, some people just say, no, can't play them. And some people say, yep, I love them. So, I mean, tell us in the chat, what is your preference? And that brings us on to what we were just talking about, Custom Shop. Is it possible to order this very same guitar with a modified low oval neck? Yep. Wow, that's very interesting. That's very uh, exciting. <laughs> Where's my phone? <laughs> no, you know, all jokes aside, that, that, I mean, I love the guitar. I just didn't get on with the neck. So that's, I'm surprised. Have you ever done any custom orders of this guitar at your store? Maybe one or two for, uh, you know, customer orders. We never did spec out a CEO 7 Custom for our own inventory reasons like we do with a lot of other models. But I think, if I'm remembering right, we must have done one or two of them. And I, if if we did, I, I think that customer left everything similar. He, they didn't change away from Sunburst. I remember that. They might have done a little bit of a different string spacing and a neck difference. Mm. But I... If I'm remembering right, the it was still Adirondack Sunburst over the mahogany. Maybe maybe it was what we're talking about now, and I should go look. But you you can certainly go through the custom shop, get a CEO seven without the sunburst with a low profile neck, uh, and, and and enjoy the sound of, of this instrument with just the the right uh, the, the neck that's comfortable for you. So if I only change the neck, that's the only thing I changed. Would there be a substantial upcharge or? Did we say one time you could change one feature with no additional cost? More than 10 years ago, you could change up to two features without going custom shop, but that's that that changed uh, a long time ago. These days, any single change would be a custom instrument and it, get ready to uh, mm. to expect it to be at least 10 months. Okay, so I'm going to have a if I order it with a with a modified low oval, I'm going to have to wait for it and it's going to be more expensive, right? It'll be more expensive. It's hard to really ballpark things like that, especially mm. uh, on camera. I wouldn't want to take guesses, but we, uh, at least through us, we'd be happy to get anybody connected with a, a quote to see exactly what it would come out for. Yeah. Well, it's good to know, though. I think the reason I'm addressing this now is not just for me. I think there's a lot of people that love the sound of that guitar, but just that aren't looking for that neck shape. But like I said, maybe you are. So let us know in the chat what you think. But that would actually be... That's exciting because I, I thought we'd be talking about this guitar today and I'd be saying, well, it's great, everything's great, but I wouldn't go for it because of the neck profile. But if we're saying that we could do a custom order with a different neck profile, that opens it up to everybody, doesn't it? Because it is an option. It just will, it will be more, you have to wait and it's more expensive, but it, at least it's, it's good It's good. there's an option to do that. So that's good to know. All right, let's jump back over to our chat and we'll come back to this graph. I love this graphic, by the way. I completely stole it from the Martin Magazine. I hope you don't mind. <laughs> I'll give them full credit for it. I love graphics like this because people talk about neck shapes and things, and it's so confusing. The way they've done this is fantastic. Look, you can, it's so clear, isn't it? So clear to see what's going on. And uh, like I said, that modified low oval there is probably my my go-to. I also like the low profile performing artists. They're kind of similar, aren't they? But if you look at the oh, actually, question: Which neck is on the modern deluxe series? Is that the Vintage Deluxe? It is, yep. And that's that's probably the neck that has... I, I'm terrible at describing necks. That's got the least shoulder m mass. You I, can I see. Think that's a very, very... You might call certain necks chunky in the shoulders. That neck is the opposite of that. 
So you can see there, if you look at the center, it's the same as the modified low oval that you find on the standard series. But like you say, it's, it's, it's 0.505 on one side and 0.495 on the other side. And I'm still undecided about that, Nick. I, I always think the you know, thinner the better, but that is, that is, again, if you're used to something, you have to bear that in mind when you play something else. But it's interesting. I think this is a really interesting conversation. Like what's happening with necks on guitars? They seem to be getting thinner and thinner and thinner. But we always say, don't we, like, is it going to turn the other way and they start getting thicker again? I don't know. It's, um, it's such an interesting conversation, like the neck shape of a guitar. And it's interesting that they put the modified V on this guitar. But I presume that's because it's meant to be a vintage style guitar, right? I, I really think everything or almost everything about this guitar when it comes to design specs is just Chris. It, it's the CEO. It's what mm. he wanted to do that year with the CEO. This is the model where he gets to just... I mean, he gets to do whatever he wants any time, but this is the model where he gets to just go ahead and make it everything he wants it to be. And, and more people in the chat, uh, especially Spoon, would, would know uh, the lineage of the CEO series. A lot of these guitars, including this one, uh, can point back to some Gibson designs uh, when you, you know, strategically why they're looking you know, like this. this there's, the, there's a Gibson. Uh, is it an L00? And I'm going to show my mm. ignorance with that brand. A lot of these CEO sevens are styled after some, inspired by some Gibson stuff. <laughs> I was at a, I was at a talk. I, I've told this story before. I was at a talk that Chris did, and he said that someone brought up this guitar, and he said like, "This is Martin copying Gibson, copying Martin from back in the day, something like that." Sure. Um, CEO seven was Summer Nam twenty thirteen. This guitar has really survived the test of time, as we know. Wow. As we know, like with the colorways sometimes, like my beloved HDC is not around anymore because of sales, but this guitar is still selling probably because it is such a classic design. Before I read more comments, let's have some strumming, please, if you don't mind. Making me work at it. Really, really nice. Okay, BMO with some words of wisdom for our viewers. Everybody wants what they can't get. Rolling Stones. Yes. <laughs> Lee says, how does it feel to play? Great question. Very, very comfortable. And again, I'm coming from, you know, 200 years of the V-neck. So this is this definitely is my wheelhouse. And I think this body size is extremely comfortable. So um, mm. I would say on a scale of one to 10, this is a 10. It, it, it's just amazing how loud it is for the size. Every time you play that guitar, you're like, well, it's a small body guitar and you strum a chord on it and it just rings out loud. It's really impressive. Yeah. Um, but again, Lee, make sure you're, you know, you know, you know, make sure you know what you're getting into with the neck. Make sure before you, if you're going to order one. Roeth says, I have a question. Oh, he's gone big. Look, I have a question on mod VNEX. <laughs> I tried the double ODB Jeff Tweedy and didn't like it. Recently tried an Eric Clapton and loved the neck. And I like the neck on a triple O 28 BS. Now the Clapton neck, is that the same as this one? Yep. I think this is going to be a, a good idea for Roeth. That's the same modified V neck. Yeah. I think Roeth would really like this guitar too. Having seen him play his finger style, that would be un incredible on this guitar. I think uh, if, if Roeth, if you like that neck, I think you'll love this guitar. You did mention the tuners. I don't know if that's something that could be changed. Um, I have some thoughts on the tuners as well. Now, do we have some pic some close up pictures here? Yes, we do. One second. Okay, I'm just going to remove Roeth from the screen. 
Sorry, Roas, there we go. Um, <laughs> so is this that actual guitar? This is, yep. Okay, it looks fantastic. Now look at the headstock, those tuners. I think they went for those tuners because of the vintage look. And I think vintage tuners are just kind of like that. Yeah, I wasn't a huge fan of them either. And I always ask if you can change tuners and it's a bit of a gray area, but maybe they went for those tuners because they're light. I'm wondering that because I'm, I'm guessing like the vintage tuners from the OMJM might add some weight there. And this is a very light guitar. Remember, this is mahogany. Mahogany is very light. It's a very small body guitar. This guitar weighs nothing. When you pick these guitars up, you're like, there's nothing here. Right, Maury? Like you just, it, it, it's so deceptive because it's not only is it small, it's also mahogany and it's really light. So you just think this is like, this is a toy. And then you strum it and it's one of the most projecting Martin guitars you've ever strummed on. It's really deceiving. So I do wonder, as a serious technical question, if you did change those tuners in a custom order or change them yourself, would it add weight to the headstock? So that's why I'd probably leave those tuners on there myself i mean I, I guess it would to a point but i i don't uh i don't know i was never one of those guys that that bought a guitar and, and really tried to find a way to get uh angry at the tuning machines or they really have to be bad for me to notice them i know some guys you know might see a guitar on the catalog and before they even own it they know they won't keep those tuners i don't i don't think changing these tuners would really be that detrimental you're not a tuner sniffer I'm not. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not. I'm not even a wing inspector, let alone a, a tuner sniffer. <laughs> I think I think they go with the look, so I I wouldn't change them. Functionally, I had no problem with them either. Um, I think some people just love the vintage tuners that you get on the uh, standard series. That's the thing. Yeah, I don't. I don't see it as a downside, Roweth. Roweth, I think if you like V-neck guitars, I think you should on a, as a, as a friend, and uh, I think you should seriously consider this guitar because I know I know, I know you're. I don't think Roweth has a Martin yet, right? And I always I don't know, but he's he's been talking about looking at a double O size custom. Mm. Um so this this isn't far apart from maybe what you're looking at anyway. Yeah. But of course you have to like the sunburst too. Some I don't usually go for sunburst, but on this particular model I do like it. Okay. Um Bemo's still trying to sell me the retro guitar. <laughs> uh Becca says hi. Hi Becca, good to see you. Hey Becca. Lots of questions for you, Maury. Is it considered a true slope shoulder? Uh, I, I think so. I, I don't necessarily know what would make it maybe not be that. It's, it's the, slolder, the slolders are shoped. I didn't slip <laughs> out last night. The, the shoulders are sloped. Uh, yeah, I, I yeah. think so. Um, Addy has greater stiffness across the grain. It has deeper bass response, drier and crisper overall compared to Sitka with high-end chime. Precise definition. Yeah. Thank you, Spoon. Bob, hello to all from the snowy woods of Washington State. The world's famous Sasquatch and I are here to learn about one of our favorite Martin guitars. Bob, have you played snowy. one of these? Or do you own one of these? Does anyone here own a CE07? That's a good question. Another technical question from Jim. What is the bridge plate made of? Which guitar has the carbon fiber bridge plate? I know the answer to the, to the second half of that, but What's the bridge plate made of on this guitar? This would be a standard maple bridge plate. Okay. And I'll turn it over to my host for the other answer. The Modern Deluxe. Ding, ding. I win a prize. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Um, yeah, the CO7 was Summer Nam 2013. I'm surprised it was summer. It wasn't intended to stay around so long, but it sold a lot. And money talks. Wonder if it comes in OM scale with a larger cutaway body. Oh, great question. Is this a short scale then? This is short 24.9. Ah. If you did a long, longer scale version of this to make it an OM mm. uh, with, with larger cutaway body and a nylon strings, <laughs> I see the JK <laughs> at the end of that. Then it wouldn't be a CEO 7 at all. But <laughs> yeah. yeah, so it's um, short. That's interesting too, short scale. And what gauge strings are on there? Is that 12, so I'm guessing? Lights, yes. Yeah. And Roslyn says, hi, all here for my Martin fix. Oh, Philip, Philip Watson's here. I can see you, my friend. I hey. want one. Well, Philip, you know his number. Give him a call. What? <laughs> He's like, call me, call me. One reason <laughs> it's affordable is the back and sides are made from African... Is, it, uh, Sipo? is that Sippo or Sipo? How do you say it? 
Sipo, yeah. Sipo. Which, Sipo, Sipo, which has wonderful bottom end muscle. Ah, something from the forums comes to mind. I believe they changed the back and sides at some point. There's some discussion on the forums. Do you know anything about that? Over the years, they changed what they could, the construction is? Only that I know that that is true, and, and it's not necessarily per serial number, and I don't have a real company answer for you, but if you buy a CEO 7 today versus somebody who bought one four years ago versus the original run, they could be mahogany, sepo, or sepali. And aside from that, uh, finding mm. like the definition of, of why and when is anybody's guess at Martin. But you can certainly, you can go and buy 10 of these and compare them all at the end of the day and find some variations probably. And of course, the one you can no longer buy is the best. Yes. <laughs> Most sought after, the most rare, the most coveted. <laughs> sadly, it's sadly it's true, at least on the, in some markets. Um, Neck has lots of real estate for finger style. Yes, but it's a great strummer as well. This guitar. I know of no long scale versions. Says Spoon. The slope shoulder shape may have an issue with that. Oh, interesting. And Jack has the modified V on a J and double O and loves it. Okay, good to know. Actual length of the body is 19.428 and the bottom bout is 14.764. So in between a double O and triple O. Interesting. That's what Very I thought it looked like. Chris Hull's favorite is performing artist high performance taper. That's his of choice. Okay. This modified oh okay. The modified this this modified V has a bigger heel, which changes the shape all the way down compared to the Clapton. This one is Tubby. Okay, so Ooh. this is great information. I appreciate it. So if I go to the next sizes, are we saying then that just because... Let me just remove this comment so we can see it. Are we saying that just because the bottom left we have that modified V, not all modified Vs are the same. Is that what we're saying here? So we have to be careful. This, this isn't like, this isn't like uh, global across all the guitars. So are we, are we saying that the CEO 7 neck is a modified V and the Clapton is modified V, but this CEO 7 V is, is chunkier than the Clapton? I'd like to go back to look at the uh, official specs of the Clapton. The Clapton might be listed as a modified V with, uh, quote unquote, some heel that might change. I thought it only changed the heel, but that's a good point from Spoon if it's right. Yeah, this is a good question. I'm going, while, we're, while we're talking, I'm going to go and look at the, uh, the specs on the Martin site. Um, I shall keep looking. I, that's really good information. That's really important to know. Okay. Um, DM, I like the Mod V better than the MLO. That's uh, the modified low oval. But it's not a primary factor in guitar choice for me. Hmm. Da, da, da. Oh, yes. You know, I asked Martin a few weeks ago, Rosanna had a question about the UK membership, and I'm still waiting for the answer, but I will let you know if I get an answer. The lifetime guarantee is only valid for US customers. Buying abroad means no guarantee at all. Pretty strange. I don't, is that right? I'd have to get the official word on that. Do you know? Do you know? I mean, I, Maury might not know because we're in the USA, but do, does anyone know if the Martin warranty in the UK is, is um, lifetime guarantee like it is in the USA? Do you, know, do you know? I suppose you don't know, Maury. I honestly don't. I, not a cop mm. out, but I that that doesn't really happen. That doesn't really affect our you know domestic relationship with Martin. I'm not sure. It's I mean it's always a problem. I remember when I was in the UK and I ordered a Maton from Australia. The problem is it still had the warranty, but they have a, obviously they have a distributor in the UK. So over here. I could call up Martin and deal with them direct. But when I was in the UK, I had to call the distributor for Mayton guitars. And they had to then contact Mayton. And then Mayton had to get back to them and they had to get back to me. And that oh. definitely slowed things down. It didn't affect the warranty status, but it did slow things down. And that's just, I mean, that's just um, logistics, right? But I don't know the ins and outs of that stuff, so I won't, I won't comment. Um, da, 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 da. Stephen, hi from New Jersey. How you doing? Da, da, da. Oh, I'm new to guitar. Cool. To know the difference. My OXMAE has a performing artist neck. Yeah, Maury was just telling me before we went live, the performing artist was on the... There was a series of guitars a few years ago, and I, I did have one briefly. That is quite a thin... In fact, that is the thinnest neck, isn't it? At 640. I'm just looking at the graphic here. 
Yeah, that was that's a really thin that's a really thin neck. I wonder how that compares to like a tailor. I wonder if that's exactly the same as like a tailor neck, because that's pretty mm -hmm. thin, isn't it? A six forty. That's even thinner than the than the uh, OMJM. Very thin. So tell me, Jim, do you like it? And Maury, can you still get the performing artist neck on any on any guitar at the moment in the lineup? Uh, without going custom shop, I don't think so. Interesting. So they went super thin for a while on that series, and now you can't get it anymore. It's really, really interesting stuff. So maybe people don't want super thin necks on a mark. Interesting. Um, hey, Chazza. Wow, I love this. What do you love? The graphic? It is rather nice. I should have just lied and said I made it myself. <laughs> I would have got a fan out pretty quick with all these Martin fans here. Um, oh, Spoon says, this was, my, this was my favorite neck until my injury sent me back to low profile. Very interesting. Um, Jack says, since I started on classical guitars and have large hands, I prefer the modified B. Very, very mixed um, opinions here. How much does a modified neck cost? Maury might not be comfortable giving us a, a, a figure on the stream, but um, that, yeah, I, I am, I'm personally kind of interested as well. Are we talking substantial upcharge, Maury, or slight upcharge here? Uh, <laughs> it doesn't really I'm help. I'm going to be careful it? how I answer, only because I don't necessarily know how to say mm. it. It's not that I'm afraid of revealing it. I would think you, you should expect at least a few hundred dollar difference. Um, but boy, I hate saying things like that, because then if it's like, what is a few hundred... Yeah. Am I right? But I, it's it's not going to be under a hundred bucks. So if you're going to make right. an, an adjustment and change something about a custom guitar, neck or not, uh, it's it's money. It's it's not a thousand bucks, but I I'd, I'd put it somewhere in the high hundreds. We we don't want to put Maury on the spot. The best thing, if you're really interested, is to email him uh, Maury at Maury'sMusic dot com and just get a quote. Okay, and that, it's always best to contact your, um, Maury or your dealer if you're in another part of the world to get a quote. Anyway. Um, but I was interested in that. So we're not talking less than a hundred bucks and we're not talking more than a thousand bucks, right? We're talking about probably that, a few hundred, right? That's from so, memory. I'm, I'm guessing that way. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But don't quote anything we say today. <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm saying to you, but pretend you never heard it. It's, you know, these questions are going to come up and the answer I should always give is contact Maury and get, get it, you know, in writing from him. Okay. Yeah. Good evening from Vienna, Austria. Hello. Wow. Bob Dobson, I love the modified V-neck. Very similar to, my, similar to my early Gibson Les Paul neck. Yeah, if you love the vintage electrics, you'll oh. love it too. Yeah, true. I'm surprised a Gibson electric is like a V. That's that's cool. Spoon has a very, another very important point. If you change the neck shape, you also have to change the string spacing for the high performance taper, which means different hole spacing drilled. So it's more than just that it's okay. It's not just a matter of they put a different neck on there, it changes the string spacing as well. Okay. Yeah. Unless you want the older, wider fretboard. Okay, that's a lot of talking. Let's hear some more playing. Can we hear some capo stuff up the neck? See how it takes a capo? I'm not sure if I have a capo here. You do have yes, a... I do. It says, it says 50. I don't know why it says 50 on there. I, sure. I, I don't know why they picked that number. Can't possibly be your age, can it? it maybe, maybe the <laughs> thing around here is whenever you turn 25, they give you a... They give you a capo double your age. <laughs> You're going to get there too, buddy. Never. 40 forever. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Forty was much harder than fifty, by the way. I thought turn of forty was, was scarier.
Yeah, sounds great. I'm just on the Martin site. I really want to clarify this. This is bugging me. If I look at the Clapton, it says modified V standard taper. And if I look at the CEO 7, it says modified V standard taper. So more of your spoon, please educate me here. Is this the same neck or are we saying that these V necks are all slightly different? That's, I think that's important information. Well, I'll answer that by saying you have to give Martin a grace period because the website did just change. Mm. And the first few months of that, uh, it's not un unheard of for them to have some, uh, not typos, but you might find really accurate information coming down the pike that might not be on the website yet. And it wouldn't surprise me if Spoon's right about a modified V-neck on a Clapton having some things different about it when you compare it to another modified V, but I'm not entirely sure, wait to hear this, that it would really show up in text. I'm not sure they're going to label it differently, but you might play a Clapton and a CEO 7 in a store and see a slight difference. It's not part of the nomenclature. And I'd love to hear Spoon uh, correct me there if, if he can. Yeah, I would love to know. That's really important information as well for anyone that's potentially interested in buying one. Uh, Lee is relentless. More, he's a, in case you don't know, Lee's in the UK and Martin dealers can't sell to different countries. He says, Maury, I want to try that guitar. Can you send it to me, sale or return? Now, every <laughs> week he wants Maury to send him. A, Lee, you're just going to have to move to America like I did. There you go. Reach out and take it through the screen. Do that, do that again. I'm going to get it. <laughs> you wish. I oh, wish I could dude. help you, Lee, really. You've been great. I wish I could. Lee, it's probably best you don't live in America because you'll be buying a guitar every week like me. Um, Old says, OM28MD. Actually, I haven't bought a guitar for at least a week. Um, Old says, OM28MD <laughs> 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 is a different neck. Yes, the Mon Deluxe is different. Oh, oh, the OM Mon Deluxe neck is different to the other Mon Deluxe necks. That's a good point, um, Olds. That's a very good point. Um, Don Martin says, the Mon V and MLO are my favorite. Yeah, me too. Spoon says the Vintage Deluxe is also as asymmetrical and sort of corkscrews as you go up the neck. Uh, yes, it does. Yeah, I I'm, I'm, I'm haven't decided about that, about the Vintage Deluxe, Deluxe neck yet. How, how are those guitars selling, Maury? Are they, the Mon Deluxe line, is that like a, is it kind of, what, what's going on with that? It's been out for a while um, now. We can't keep them in stock. Not, not that this is a good hmm. time to really compare we can't keep anything in stock with, with production, but <laughs> yeah. uh, when things are going well, they, they're great for us. I'm not sure how they're doing, uh, you know, out the door at Martin across the entire dealer network, but yeah, I, they do great here. Um, I was one of those who stated the V-neck is not for me. I learned classical guitar first, so I'm used to wide fretboards and rather thick but flat necks. Thumb always on the back. Mm. Okay, this was Chris's homage to the LOO. Is that, that's a Gibson, right? But the LOO was taken from the 12th fret Martin shape. Yeah. Yep, I love that. I love it when you said that at the show. Mar Martin copying a Gibson, copying a Martin. That was funny. He's got did you mean to say, great did stories. Did you mean to say L double knot or LOO? I'm, I've started saying O again. I just It's just easier for me than, than ought. I don't like saying ought. Yeah, but, but yeah. Spoon says double knot. <laughs> I'm going to say Lou, <laughs> the Lou. <laughs> He's homage to the Lou. There you go. Um, uh, da, 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 da. Unable to unlearn this, a uh, classical, right? Okay, Lars says, how come you call this model underpriced? I wouldn't say underpriced. It's, it's affordable for what it is. It's almost like a custom shop. And that's, that's, that's similar to what we were saying earlier. Yes, it costs more money in Sweden. And we've had this conversation before because the, the guitars are made here in the USA and then when they ship them, then you add transport and freight and you add the local um, distributor, obviously then charges on top. It's no different to if I buy a Cole Clark, right? Like if I buy a Cole Clark here in, the, in, in America, it's being shipped all the way from Australia and then the distributor is, is upcharging as well. And I speak to friends in Australia and I tell them that a Cole Clark here is twenty eight hundred, and they tell me, "Well, they got theirs for eighteen hundred. It's the, it's the same. It's the same thing, isn't it? It's logistics. Yeah. And to his point, if if I could be more clear, what I meant was back when this first came out, if you looked at a Sitka topped Adirondack Martin, and then you looked at a similar guitar that was Sitka with Adirondack on it, uh, mm. maybe like a 
triple oh eighteen GE back then, or if, if there was an example in the catalog of another instrument that had the same tone woods as this, this compared to that was less expensive, and that's that's sort of where it put it in a sweet spot. Yeah, I, I think I, I'm just on the site now. I was expecting the price to be more. I mean, for a for essentially like a, a custom shop style guitar with an Addy top, I think it's good. Myself. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Jim, Jim, terrible look. Maury, check your email. I'm sending the request for a quote right now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Maury's going to check his email. So <laughs> oh. I hear, I, <laughs> I hear Eve of Destruction. Oh, is that, was Maury playing a cover? Tut, tut. Uh, a little bit of Better Days has that progression in there. I'm, mm. I'm guilty. Don Martin says, that's a wonderful guitar. <laughs> How did the tuners smell? Tunery, like tuna. <laughs> okay, Roeth is debating between a CEO seven, a CEO nine, and 0018. Um, um, yeah, the CEO nine is too warm for me. I like the CEO seven. I haven't played a 0018, but that's surely a good option as well. Yeah, you won't go wrong with, between those. Between those. Um, Spoon says it is not the same as the Clapton. Okay, this is really good information. This is the same neck on the Tweedy. The 1930s heel makes it beefier than the Clapton. So this is a beefier neck than your OM28, Maury, right? I, I guess. Mm. I, I'd have to really play them back to back. And we don't forget, we might be talking about, like, you know, really, really small differences when he's, okay. he's telling the truth, but it might not be something that comes down to... Uh, everybody who plays both of them would have a clear favorite. They might be really small differences. Right. I'm sure they are, but it's still, still good information, as Roa says. Um, they call them both modified V, but the heel shape affects the entire shape. Okay, makes sense. More in the upper frets. Okay. Very, very cool. I played an OM42 before they reimagined it, and I found the way it gets wider up the neck really uncomfortable. Remember that? The OM OM42 mm -hmm. before they reimagined it. The neck shape on that, just like, as you go up to like the twelfth fret, it's just like a classical guitar. And if I'm right, I think spoon means the heel of the neck influences yeah. what happens here. Yeah. So if we have a V neck that starts here and ends at the body, what happens at the heel has to have some kind of an effect. Mm -hmm. uh, if I'm saying that right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm sure it's subtle because you, you would have noticed that you you have a a V neck on your personal guitar, so you would have noticed like a, a major difference, but. Yeah, it's still great information to know, and I appreciate Spoon sharing that. Very, very, very cool. Okay, how would the CEO 7 sound with a set of retro strings? I, I tried the retros last week. They're on my OMJM, and I really like them. They're really cool strings. Um, how would it sound with retro strings? I don't know. Are they just are they uh, standard Martin strings on the on the uh, CEO 7, Maury? Yep, these are going to be Foster Bronze Martin Authentic Light. Maybe that's a good video, Jim. Maybe uh, mm. this week I'll, I'll play this. And then restring it with retros and do a YouTube comparison video. Yep. If you promise to share it everywhere in the world, I will do it. <laughs> Good question. The, the shoulders similar to Martin 12 fret, 12 fret guitars, but not identical. Olds would love a 12 fret version. Hmm. So it's not, so asking Spoon, it's not a true double OL. And everyone's asking Spoon questions now. Should I have him on? What what mod V neck is on the <laughs> what mod V neck is on the vintage series like the 0018 V? Oh yeah, the vintage. Yeah, like what neck is on the um, you know the uh, the authentics? Is that a modified V? Each I authentic mean, neck has that... its own neck. Oh, the, okay. The D28 authentic 1937 has that neck. The mm -hmm. D18 ha authentic has that neck. That's another argument and entirely new episode. They changed it almost immediately, 2014, and probably 2014. My insider source says this model is only Sipo, never Sapelli. Now, Spoon, I, I told you, I don't <laughs> like to be corrected on camera. If I'm wrong, tell me after it's over, where no one else can see it. Uh, that's surprising. I, I didn't know that, and that's, uh, I, for what it's worth, so I can feel smart, I think I know who his insider is, and I trust him. So. I was surprised when you said Sapelli. I didn't think they would use that on this model myself. Um, Sipo, I, I thought it'd be Sipo. But who knows? Things can change, of course, all the time. 
Um, oh, good. The CEO 7 is number two concert size favorite on Reverb. What's number one? <laughs> Actually, don't tell me. Um, <laughs> oh, Kooky, how, how you doing? In France, there is no lifetime warranty. That's good to know. So I didn't. I had no idea about this. So the lifetime warranty is only in the USA. Wow. Interesting. I'll just say that. Roweth says vintage series. <laughs> vintage series is modern heel. Golden era series and marquee series have the thirteen star heel. CEO seven identical to the triple O eighteen GE. I hope that answers your question. Um, in Germany and Austria, you get a warranty from the distributor. Yeah, that's what I thought. There's a whole new video there on warranties, but I won't be the one that makes it. Yeah. <laughs> I'll let Kuki make that video. Um, Kuki, by the way, did you see I gave you a shout out in my video this week about tone matching? I did put your picture on there. I hope you didn't mind. I should have asked you first, really, before I put your picture on the video. Um, <laughs> warranty is related to each country having their own laws and liability. Okay, that's, a, that's the answer right there. The warranty is related to the, the country having the laws that affect the country you're in. Yes. Spoon, what don't you know? <sighs> He's just a, a wealth of information, this guy. Yes, I like the neck. Thanks, Spoon. That is very helpful when I can't try out all these guitars. Yes, it is, because we get to see and hear them here. But you know, stuff like the neck shape, I, I keep mentioning it because I'm worried that people might overlook these things, right? You might, as a new guitar player, you might not even think about the neck shape of a guitar. In fact, as a new guitar player, it might not really matter, which is a good thing. But I think it's good because you can't see it. You, when you're not playing the guitar yourself, you can't feel that neck shape. So it's good to remind people to be aware of, of the different shapes. Yes, I was right. Look, the PA neck was designed to compete directly with Taylor, i.e. an electric guitar neck. Tim Till wanted an acoustic guitar neck, so he went with the mod low oval. Interesting. So who designed the performing artist neck? Was that not Tim Teal? Getting all the, all the, all the inside gossip today. <laughs> the neck on the OM28 Mon Deluxe seems thinner than the performing artist high performance taper. I haven't played the OM28 Mon Deluxe, but I know it's a different shape. And that's a good point, Chris. And even though uh, we looked at that nice chart that Aaron got uh, from the journal, just because the thickest or thinnest, when you look at that chart, and you can, it's basically referencing the, the center of the neck, that number might be thinner than the center of a different neck. That doesn't necessarily tell the whole story. The, the actual shoulders and the feel of maybe the second to the smallest neck, do you know what I'm trying to say? Just because, and I can't see the screen that well from here, but the performing artist's neck, um, if that's, X amount deep from fretboard to the back of the center of it. It's also how fat the shoulders are that contribute mm. to how that neck feels in your hand. And the skinniest neck going by only that center number might not tell the whole story. Yeah, there's more to it than that. But that is that is a great graphic, and I'm I'm glad that they put that in the magazine. That's very useful. Oh, yeah. I'm going to use that in the future. Um, Lars says there's no warranty from Martin's distributor in Scandinavian countries. Okay. This is the only 30s style heel still in production. Hmm. And Alex says, nice tone, nice cat. <laughs> <laughs> Chris, the Mon Deluxe neck is based on a 1930 OM, which is very low, and the apex drifts as you go up the neck. But it does not have the big heel, so it's much slimmer in the upper frets than the 1930 OM. And if I'm not mistaken, I believe Spoon has played the guitar that was based on. I think he may have told me that on one episode. One of the most toneful Martins out there, in my opinion. I agree, Spoon. Chris Hull says, it's crazy thin. Talk about the neck, I presume. Martin says, this is the same neck. They always did that, but the GE Marquis series necks have a different heel, and it fattens up the cheeks and the exact shape of the V. Very interesting stuff. Um, Alex says, I have a guitar with performing artist taper. Modified low oval profile. The profile is nice, sort of a soft V type feel, but I don't especially like the narrow spacing at the 12th fret and bridge. Today's video has become a discussion on neck profile. I, I thought it might do. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get out of the way today. It says uh, naught, not not. Naught. Oh, boy. Naught, naught. I'm still downloading that CEO. Damn, I ain't that. I guess. Talking about when you try to give them the guitar. So if you can, so Marco, <laughs> hey Marco, if you compare the 0018 with the CEO7, 
similar to a point, but Addy versus Sitka, is it, is it the 300 bucks makes the difference? That's the the age old question, and I know so many people that prefer Sitka over Adirondack that mm. it's not automatically yes. Wow. Uh, you, in those two guitars, you really basically are deciding: do you want Adirondack or don't you? And if you do want it, is it worth the upcharge? That's just too much of a personal taste question to for anybody to answer honestly. I always think that Addy would just be like a considered an upgrade, but you're you're telling me that you've had customers prefer Sitka over Addy. Absolutely. Oh. It's an upgrade as far as cost. It's an upgrade as far as pedigree. And if you if you want to buy two guitars just to sell them later, you can command a higher price uh, with the Adirondack version. But there, there are too many good examples of a Sitka top guitar. Uh, and I've back when we had customers in the store, uh, more, I don't want to say more than half the time, but it was very unfair to say that everybody who played Adirondack liked it better. They also used to say what kind of scallop bracing a guitar had. This has the vintage standard series scalloping. Da, da, da. Has Martin ever had a slope shoulder triple O? I want one. Uh, yeah. Would you consider the triple O 15 SM slope shoulder maybe? <gasps> oh my goodness. <laughs> Maury put a word in for Lee with Colorado capo. And they've made a special exception to ship him a capo to the UK. There you go. Wow. That was Matt's birthday the other day, too. That's cool. So it's not what you know, it's who you know. Just so you know. <laughs> Just, I'm, I'm glad that's caught on camera. For Finally, I'm 50 years old. Finally, somebody I know did something that <laughs> a, a, a quote like that. It's, it was bound to happen. I'm glad to hear that. Very cool. Um, he says... Does the CEO 9, which is mango, smell like mango? That's a question I've often wondered myself. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, it does. I only got picking about the shapes because Roeth said he did not like the Tweedy neck, but liked the clap. I thought he said he did like the Tweedy. No? Oh, I'm, I'm confused. CEO 7 and 9 have the Tweedy neck. Okay. Same neck as the Tweedy model. Um, some might say you cannot have too many Martins. Really? Who says that? But much to my surprise, I feel that I'm all set with my D35, 0015M, and GPC PA4. I mean, that's a good, that's a good mixture. That so, is, so that GPC PA4 has the performing artist neck. That's what the PA stands for, right? You've been paying attention, yep. I'm yeah. learning so much today. Um, <laughs> would love a 00L and would buy CEO7 except for the neck. I hear that a lot. Don't have the heart to buy an L... Oh, oh, Gibson. Why not? Patiently waiting for Earth guitar. Yeah. I really, I, 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 I'm not, I'm not ashamed to say it. I want the Noel Gallagher signature Gibson that's coming out in June, and my birthday is in June, and I'm going to be 41 years old. I think I deserve that guitar. If you, anyone's watching that cares, thank you. Yeah. But I would, I would like to see a Noel Gallagher Martin signature as well. That would be cool. They should do that. Um. Lars says, a very lax live stream. Well, okay, I'll, t I'll give you some inside information. Maury said earlier he didn't sleep much last night. So he's, he's, <laughs> he's got the, he, he's drifting. And um, I'm actually doing some remodeling here. I'm, um, I'm going to put those foam things up on the wall. I used to have them, and I took them all down when I moved the desk. And I'm going to put them all over the back wall. I've got a new rug that I'm going to put in. I meant to get the Martin rug. The only, only diehard Martin fans will know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Last year, they started to, to remodel stores with their own branding because now a lot of stores that sell many guitars have like certain areas for certain um, brands, if you notice lately. Yeah. And they started putting these red rugs in. And I noticed I picked up on that and, and I actually found one online. I was going to get it to be the ultimate Martin fan. And I, asked, I think I asked Robert if that was like a marketing thing I, or whether they just bought a bunch of them. I don't know. But anyway... That's beside the point. I'm not, I haven't got that rug. I'm getting just a full-size rug. And I'm getting a stand, which I will be covering and reviewing on the channel. Unfortunately, we have to construct it. It's a stand that holds all the guitar cases. So they'll all be in one place and not like littered around the apartment. So I, I will be reviewing this stand as well if anyone's, if anyone's interested. So we're going to build that and put it in the corner. So I'm, I'm, I'm mellow because in the back of my mind, when we, when we finish this stream, I have to do all this, all this work that I don't want to do. 
And Maury's mellow because he didn't sleep last night. So between us, we're having a very mellow session. So uh, thank you for understanding. I'm sorry, I only got two hours and I'm just <laughs> muscling through this. I, I want to be here, but my, my brain doesn't. I'm sorry. Two hours <laughs> is not enough sleep for anybody. So we appreciate you not canceling. <laughs> oh, I would never. Uh, he wouldn't dare. Um, okay, where did I leave off here? Ecam and the sniffer. Um, oh, yeah, very relaxed. Like, so that's why it's such a relaxed live stream. Yeah. <laughs> Um, why? Oh, Genie, why does the CEO 7 have an ebony head plate? Why? Just because it's, it's Chris just wanted a design, it. design choice because the CEO wanted it. And really, that's it. Spoon says, I don't mean to be a know it all. I was in the loop as this model came to be, have some of the design drawings. Oh, wow. You got some of the design drawings? Hmm. And my 2013 review is still my most read article, Tone Quest Report, and my site. Wow. Yeah, Spoon does have a journal blog. You should check it out. And yep. um, no, Spoon, we, we, we don't think that at all. We need your information. That's, that's why we love having you in the chat and why we have you on the show, because you do know a lot of this stuff, and it's all valuable. We appreciate it. Michael says, Maury, it was good speaking with you earlier today. Ah, oh, I sense a good, is it, can I sense a guitar purchase here? Or was he just calling uh, to chat about the weather? That's patient <laughs> confidentiality. I, I can't say too much, but it was nice speaking with you too, Mike. Well, I think he kind of, you know, I think he alluded to that with the comment. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, Kuki. Yes, I know, Kuki. I put it in the description. I made a mistake. Just check your video. You don't need to loop back. Just apply the EQ to the impulse track. Yeah, it's actually even easier to do than it is in my video. And I was going to make an updated video um, showing this as well. Um, very, very easy to do and very good results I got from doing that. So Aaron, we should do a stream next week where can Spoon correct me faster and more often than Kuki can uh, correct <laughs> you. That'd be pretty cool to watch. You know, these YouTube videos are tough because you want to make them, you want to release them. And then often you do then, I don't know if this happened to you, but I do a lot of technical stuff. So I, I often realize later on there's a better way to do it. But at that point, I've had views and I don't want to delete it and I can't change it. So what, what I'm going to do with this video is make like a part two, like another version and then show the refinements that I've made, maybe show another okay. pickup with it. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's kind of an ongoing thing, right? I sort of learn something and then, I mean, I guess we're committing ourselves to to tape, aren't we, with this stuff? That's the problem. Yeah, and it's a good fun. We're, I'm picking on those two guys just because they are really, really brilliant and it just seemed like a funny thing to say. But I, I've done videos where I've uploaded it and wanted to change something about it. But uh, fortunately for me, I don't learn anything after I do it. So I don't have an interest where <laughs> I'll go back and, and see a video from two weeks ago. I, I didn't gain any perspective. I just put them up and leave them there because I, everything I'm going to know, I already know. I, I don't, I'm not a learner like you are. I, I don't mind. The thing is, the thing is with YouTube, like you can delete the video. And I just think it's more like a journal. Like we're always adding and learning and adding stuff. That's why I like YouTube. I just, it is frustrating if you miss something that was very obvious or you could have done better, but it's its an organic thing. And hopefully people are watching the, the other videos I make and will see the improvements I've made as I go. But I mean, last week I released three videos that did really well, but I made a mistake in each of them, technically. I mean, small mistakes, nothing serious. But what I do is I throw it into the description below. I put a star and just write anything that I've, um, that, could, that could be done differently. And I'll just make the video again, basically. But yeah, it's one of the things with YouTube, you know, and friends like Spoon and Kooky, because uh, they're going to pick up on that. <laughs> but Sp Spoon and Kooky, you, that's you guys are the best, and I, I, I'm, you know, you got to know that I'm saying all this in good fun. You know? Spoon says Addy is different and was what they used until mid 1940s, but better is entirely personal. I love Sitka with mahogany, but this body shape, top bracing, all work very well together on this model. Yes, Kooky, that's why, I, that's why I did the method the way I did, because I was using your way of capturing an IR from a tone dexter or similar. And uh, like, yeah, like I said, it's actually even easier to do that tone matching thing than I put in that video. So I'm going to make an, an updated video of that as well the with a different was awesome. pickup. Uh, it was cool, Kooky. I sent that plugin is so good. Now, it doesn't work with all pickups. Last week we were talking about underseller pickups. It improved my underseller pickup, but it didn't make it sound like the mic. When I sent Maury a recording of an anthem and then an anthem with the tone match, I was I personally felt there was no difference at all. I was really, really, really impressed with what that thing does. Um, 
I'm really loving the tone matching. And yesterday I used the voice print DI, which I think is very similar. And that sounded good too. And I, I had a trance yesterday. I'll probably do different videos with different pickups and tone matching. I'm just really, really geeky stuff like that that only I will uh, watch. But that's fine. Um, even Kooky didn't see that video of the IR, <laughs> of the tone match. But he knows it all already, so it's fine. Um, oh, Marco knows about it. Oh, because I posted that on Facebook. The J150 Noel Gallagher. You see, that's a whole new conversation. That's an expensive guitar. And the J150 is, you know, when, that, when that was released in the 90s, that was an affordable guitar. But because it's a Noel Gallagher signature, it adds to the price, of course. So there's a whole video there on signature guitars and if they're worth the upcharge. Rosin says, it's because of your review that I now have the CEO 9 and I'm super happy with it. Very cool. Full Moon Fever. Mm. Uh, thumbs up. <laughs> Maury, at least you look marvelous. No, you do. Is that a double coffee? I presume. Yes. Yeah. Oh, not a big sunburst. You mean the fan or you mean the sunburst isn't big on the guitar? Now, I, I am not a fan of sunburst in general, but I like this sunburst on this guitar. Um, Spoon, you like Sitka and Mahogany and me too. Yeah, Mahogany's good. I like Mahogany as well. I like how light it is too. Show some thumbs. I can only see two thumbs. Um, <laughs> I think we've all lost the plot today. <laughs> Oh, look, for, we've got an exclusive from Kooky. I made something even cooler than Tone Match, but this is something you cannot do with Logic. Oh, please do share. Ooh. Please email me after the show. All right, before we do the giveaway, let's do some playing. Let's have one more. Um, what's, what, what should we do on the guitar? I don't know. Can you do strumming and finger picking in one song? Can you go from finger picking to strumming? Is that too much? Sure. <laughs> He's like, sure. He's like, you know I'm tired and you're trying to work even harder this week. <laughs> it's the most I've played in any video. <laughs> Actually, someone left a comment last week that we talk too much. And I did explain this is a talk show, but I also do agree we should play the guitars as well, especially a guitar that sounds as good as this, to be fair. So here. I agree, yeah. tired to do that chord progression that made no sense <laughs> <laughs> old says i might have to go out and play a few mod v guitars and yeah. kooky says nice guitar that is a great guitar if you honestly if i've owned one if you like that neck shape then i wouldn't even hesitate fantastic guitar if you don't like that neck shape then you have my sympathy because what do you do do you order a custom and wait 10 months or do you look for something else great question hey, Aaron, can i ask you <laughs> was the neck shape the only thing you didn't like about it Yes, I, I, the tune, I don't, I see, I'm a, I'm a tuner sniffer. I don't love those tuners. I didn't hate them. I don't know. Uh, yeah, but that, that's not a deal breaker. The, the neck, because it's the, for me, it's about the sound and the playability, of course. But I just remember being so impressed with the tone. The tone's so, so great. But the neck shape for me is a mystery because 
I mean, I'm not going to say people don't like that neck shape, but clearly a lot of people here like that neck shape, so that's fair enough. Um, yeah. But you weren't I, unhappy with the tone. Oh, no, the tone is one of the best tones I've ever heard from any guitar. Amazing. Amazing tone. And so funny the way you pick it up, and it's so light because it's so small and it's mahogany, and you think this is a toy guitar, you know, and you need any strum it, and boom. The projection is just like a punch in the face. And I love guitars that project like that. Yeah, this is an amazing guitar. Um, if it had the standard neck shape, I would probably get one. I, I would even I would consider ordering one from the custom shop with a with the with the uh, the standard series neck shape. So that's a really cool guitar. Yes, very cool stuff. Um, let's do the giveaway. Courtesy of Maury's Music. You can win a set of three strings, USA only, unfortunately, my friends. But if you're outside the USA, you can still play along to see if you can win, if you can beat everyone else to the, to the answer. Here's the rules for YouTube and also how to play. I'm going to post a URL in the chat that takes you to Maury's music. And you click on the images tab, find the difference in the first two images. Come back here and type in the chat your answer. It has to be a very detailed and correct answer. It has to match the answer that Maury gave me, okay? So I'm going to post it now, and once I post it, I'll go to a countdown. If no one gets I mean, this is very difficult this week. If no one gets it, we will forfeit the winner. There'll be no winner. And while we're doing that, we'll have Maury playing this guitar again. <laughs> Sorry, Maury. And then, <laughs> and then if I see the first winner, I'll hit the DJ air horn that sounds like this. And that means we have a winner. So here, here it comes in the chat. And of course, this video is delayed, so they're probably going to see the link in the chat ahead of time, which might seem weird, but it's just the fact that we've, we're on a live stream here. And I've spoken so long now, it shouldn't be delayed, so hopefully they're expecting it. Here it comes. I'm going to get in trouble. Okay, take it away. All right, DM got it very quickly there. This was a tough one. Three bridges on the second picture. <laughs> and Roeth says, I get, you gave it away with the notes. Huh? What note? You gave it away oh, with the notes. there's no a note under the picture. You might want to show them your screen again if you can. Oh yeah, another, uh... just in case no one went over to take a look at it. I'll show you what we're talking about. <laughs> Don't forget to check out Maury's Music's uh, website. Always updated with his latest inventory, I presume. When's yeah. the last? I haven't asked you lately. When, when did you last go to the factory? How's that? How's, how are things out there? I was there Thursday and it was hopping. There was a, a couple of big, gigantic 18 wheelers ahead of me there, but it, it was moving. Let me jump over to the site and show you what we're talking about, just in case you didn't go and play the game. Oh, where's my desktop gone? Here it is. <laughs> this guitar photo was doctored as a joke. Well, no. Oh, that was a joke, that was a giveaway and, and, um, contest. RHD35 does not have three bridges. <laughs> <laughs> he only does that because a few weeks ago, he did something to the, the D45 or whatever it was. And I said, Maury, um, what if someone went on your website during the stream and was going to purchase that? And I think I got the, the wheels turning in his mind. Mm -hmm. This is a cool Paranoia. guitar. Have we, have we had the HD35 on the show before? We have, yep. I'm surprised we have, we've not had the CEO 7 on here before. I was sure we had. Me too. I had a double Crazy. check. Crazy, yeah. I'm just checking out this HD35. Very, very, very nice. <laughs> Always shopping. Look at that. Yeah, check out Maury's site later on. And thank you for giving the strings away. We really appreciate it. We've been, cool. we've been discussing the possibility of changing the giveaway to something else. We'll let you know next week if we do that. But um, I did like today's uh, game. Look at that. Very, very difficult. <laughs> You can tell Maury's had no sleep last night. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let us know in the chat. What do you think? My conclusion is very easy because I've owned the guitar. Fantastic guitar all round. Love everything about it, but the neck shape is not for me. 
What do you think in the chat? Would you would you consider buying one of these? Do you what do you like about it? What don't you like about it? Please share with us. We've got 15 minutes left. Um, so do share with us what you think. And I'll read through the chat. And congratulations, that was DM. Do send your information to Maury. And let me go back to the chat that I've missed here. Okay, Spoon says there aren't many VMod VMod? That's a Stratocaster. There aren't many mod V. Oh, I didn't do viewers' comments. Let's do that. That's why the time's going so quick. I didn't want to get in the oh. way of your show, but I, I missed it. That's why the time's gone so quick. Oh, it's from our friend FDNY. Nice. And dun dun dun. Ooh. It's an electric guitar. Don't hate me. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah, we love electrics too. Um, Maury and myself are big Strat fans, and this is a Squire Telecaster. And he did give me some notes about it, but we'll just admire it for today. Um, and also, if you've got pictures or videos, please send them. We enjoyed the ones last week from our friend at Lee. That was very entertaining. And I'll put the address on the screen to send stuff to. Say hi at erinshortmusic.com. Please do send us pictures of strings you've won. Send us pictures of your Martin guitars. Send us videos of you playing something. That would be really, really cool if you could do that. In fact, we, we, we encourage that a lot. Um, quickly, Maury, what are your thoughts on Telecasters? You know, I, I'm a Strat guy, but I've always, I'm one of those people that I'll play a Strat all the time and I won't necessarily think about a Telecaster until I see somebody playing one and then I immediately want one. And I used to own a, mm -hmm. uh, an older uh, Made in Mexico Tele for a couple of years and I didn't really bond with it, but I think they sound amazing. I, I really like them. When I was, at, when I was in London at uni, I had to get a guitar and an amp for a cover band that I formed. And we went to the, the, it was called Denmark Street. It's where all the famous music stores are in London. And I bought a used Butterscotch, like 78 telly or something. And it was absolutely stunning. And as you know, I'm not really into used and relic stuff, but that was a stunning guitar. There was one problem with it. Can you guess what the problem was? You bought a 78 telly and there was a problem? Well, actually, I'm not sure it was 78, but whatever year it was, was the year it was that they were made very heavy. It was really oh. heavy. It was like it was like a it was like a Les Paul. And the reason, well, the reason I mentioned today about neck shape is that being you know being new to kind of electric guitars back then, not knowing much about them, I didn't even think about the weight. I was with a friend. He we looked at it. He said that'd be a cool guitar. It sounded great. It looked great. The price was good, so I bought it. But I never even thought about the weight of the guitar. And then I was playing in this cover band and I was like, man, this is a heavy guitar. <laughs> so <laughs> I kind of wish I still had it, actually. But I mean, yeah, Th these are things that do matter. The neck shape, no matter how great a guitar looks or sounds, the neck shape and the weight, especially with an electric guitar, of course, the weight and neck shape of electric or acoustic is really important. Comfort, right? Playability is really important as well as sound, sure. at least to me it is. So that's my telly story. So thank you, um, FDNY. We appreciate it. Yeah, that's a cool looking, stra uh, cool looking telly. Yeah, one, one week we're going to do the um, Dylan Goes Electric and show our electric guitars on the channel. We should. That'd be a fun change. Um, and you know, Martin once made an electric guitar. I saw a photo yesterday again of those guitars. Yeah. I used to play in a band with somebody who had one of them. Yeah. How was it? Was Very it Very heavy. That was heavy. Talk about heavy. Okay, I've got to find where I left off. Da, da, da. I scrolled through for some reason. I lost my, lost my place. Um, <laughs> Kuki's obsessed with this about my height. If anyone doesn't know, I'm 6'5". says, this guitar is way too small for you. You look like a giant with a ukulele. No, it's not true. I used to gig a mate and three-quarter size guitar. And, and it was really cool because everyone... What, what did people remember about me? You're the guy with the little, the little toy guitar. That's... That's, they're stuck in their mind. Yeah. And of course, John Mayer is tall. He plays an OM. I don't, I don't necessarily agree. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe he's got a point. I, I, I mean, I live stream now, so I play sitting down anyway. So who cares? <laughs> I haven't played standing yeah. up for a long time. I played last summer. I did a couple of shows out, you know, outside shows, and I was, I was exhausted. I haven't stood up and played for three hours <laughs> for so long. I used to play, play standing up all the time. No, I, I, I get it, but... Uh, these things don't really um, concern me. The great thing with a dreadnought is it hides my belly, of course, because it's big. So yeah, the bigger the better for that. Um, 
Spoon says it's just as wide at the 12th fret as the OM42 you didn't like. Oh, oh really? Okay. Yeah, I found that really, really wide up the neck. <laughs> not, not that I ever play up there, but it was really wide up there. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> yeah, I do. Some, I try to. Um, blue fin or yellow fin tuna. These are, these comments are from like an hour ago. I wish it would times that somehow like remind us what part of the video it was for because I get so confused. Sometimes I'm like, what? What's that got to do with what we're talking yeah. about? Old says, not a big fan of short scale, but only way to get a slope shoulder Martin. I'm obsessed with the clarity. Yeah, so can you get a slope shoulder guitar with long scale? Is that a stupid question? Uh, it's probably available in the custom shop. Mm -hmm. Everyone got the, the giveaway, sadly, a little bit too late. Rosanna's laughing. Becca didn't think the screen loaded. Or she, she thought the screen had crashed. <laughs> I got you, Becca. W oh, isn't the DSS-17 a slope? Okay, good question. Is the DSS-17 a slope shoulder long scale dreadnought or is it short scale? Ooh, that's definitely slope shoulder. I think that's long scale. Ah, there we go. Kooky. I think it is. Very good. Um, Roweth wants a guitar with three sand holes to sniff. Uh, <laughs> next, next week. DSS bigger body that was designed for long scale, but it wouldn't hurt to have Maury ask the custom shop about a long scale double OL. They've made long scale double O's for various artists. Kooky, yes, I thought about it. Really want a small body guitar. People love small body guitars. They're, com they're comfortable, that's why. Roweth, just remove the electronics from your retro. You'll get three sniffing holes. <laughs> Roweth doesn't have a retro. You're talking about um, BMO. Bring back the retro. Bring. Sorry, Kooky, having trouble hitting letters. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, hang on. Did I make a mistake here? Jim says his oh. correct answer was before DM. I should just scroll. I have to make sure I didn't mess up here. I'm going to check on my phone. I don't want to um, be mistaken. Yeah, that's not helping, Maury. It's just, that's just stressing me oh. out, so I can't scroll. <laughs> <laughs> I can't find it. Where is it? Oh yeah, Maury, t tell us a, tell us a story while I search through I'll, the chat. I'll tell that joke I know. Um, Actually, no, don't I'll don't tell a joke, please. <laughs> tell us what your itinerary is for the rest of the week with your YouTube channel. The rest of the week, I'm sleeping. Uh, we have a <laughs> virtual tour of our Martin guitars Wednesday, at 4 p.m. That's on YouTube. Uh, we're going to be showing you four new arrivals from Martin. Mm. And the second half of that program is always viewer request. Episode 51. Episode area 51, maybe, if I don't get more sleep. And then Thursday, Martin versus Martin returns to Facebook. Uh, Clayton is an employee of the Martin factory. He and I do a song circle uh, from 6 to 7 on Thursdays on Facebook. Uh, we'll play your requests and our Martin guitars. That's Thursday on Facebook. I'm sorry, I hope DM is still watching. I was wrong. Uh, maybe my software here didn't show me, but according to my phone, Jim was first. So uh, Jim McCurry said three bridges. Yes. Um, so sorry, DM. That actually goes to this week to Jim McCurry, and that was completely my fault. So I do apologize for not seeing that. But yeah, congratulations, Jim. So Jim, send Maury your de details to maury at maurysmusic.com. And I'm sorry that right I missed on. that. How did I miss that? Maybe it's my software here. So thanks for telling me. If um, serves, I do have your I have your information from the beautiful custom you took delivery of, but mm. remind me anyway. And please send me photographs of that custom. If you wouldn't mind. <laughs> um, now I'm lost that again. Happens that happens. Now I'm lost again. When are they going to add like a marker here so I know where I left off? Come on. Ecamm Live. Seafoam Green. Yes, it was. I always say I prefer Strats until I hear Skunk Baxter playing his telly on Steely Dan records. Oh, I do have, I have a, one of the few guitars from my kind of teenage years that I didn't ever sell is a, tele, a Mexican Tele Deluxe with the two humbuckers, which I upgraded to Lola pickups, Ooh. which actually has a fat neck on it. And <laughs> maybe not as fat as that guitar, 
but it is a fat neck, but um, I still play it uh, occasionally, but uh, you know. I did play a strat with like a vintage V neck. It was the, t the Ed, Ed O'Brien strat, and that's just so, it's like a tree trunk. Like I couldn't, oh. I couldn't handle it. Um, the bicycle, okay, Spoon Song, the bicycle, Bicy bicyclist is so much fun to play. I've learned about 75% of it. Thanks for tabbing it out. Very cool. So Roeth, I'm expecting a performance of that song next. Thank you, my friend. Oh, T from Charlie Tra here just joined in. Somebody's probably asked already. CEO or CEO9, they have the same neck. Yes, they do have the same neck. And I prefer, I like the look of the nine, but I prefer the sound of the seven. I find it a bit more present. I found that the nine was warmer. Mm. But, and it's funny because I ordered my CEO seven from Maury's Music. And then the day after, as it was shipping out, I went to uh, Rudy's here in New York City. They had the nine and I never played the seven. And I played the nine. I was so worried because it was kind of warm sounding. I was like, oh, I don't I don't I was like, have I made a mistake? And then the seven arrived, and it was great out of the box. It was great. It had a bright, a brighter tone. That's probably a wrong word, but I personally, I prefer the seven for that reason. What do you, which do you prefer, Maury, from the seven or the nine? The seven. I think the nine sounds better than. Uh, when I play the nine, my first impression is a little bit almost muddy. But as I play it a few minutes, I really gravitate to it, and it, it's. It's only the first minute or two of the nine that I'm a little bit underwhelmed, and then I then I like it. But I do like the seven better. Old says I'm fine with small guitars as long as it's not Hello Kitty. Hey, that's the best guitar I own. <laughs> Kooky has gas for a CS Relic 63. Oh, custom shop Relic 63 custom deli double binding clay for random fingerboard. Well, wow, nice. Are you gonna buy one? Gas is one thing, but making that gas real is the is mm -hmm. the key. Thought my eyes were going bad. <laughs> <laughs> Best live stream ever. What? Because you got your capo. Oh, can you can you give us uh, can you give us a preview of these four new arrivals that can be on the show this week? Uh, if I can remember. <laughs> um, prop. Well, this this will be one of them. Okay. Uh, a couple, a couple lefties that I probably won't bring on the program. Mm -hmm. Maybe, uh, maybe an HD twenty eight E. Oh, is that um, bags or Fishman? Uh, bags. Okay. Other than that, the other two, I, I'm not sure. Hmm. And Jim's gonna send a picture and also a video of the custom, perhaps. Yeah, please do. I need more. I need more more um, viewers letters. I can dig it, Roa. Thanks. And tell us the joke. Okay, we might end with the joke. We're coming up to time now. <laughs> Spoon, can you download notation at your site? Yes, so Spoon has a site and he has his notation on there as well. Roeth says, oh, Kooky says, Roeth, send the song to Aaron, then Spoon can file a YouTube clip. <laughs> Kooky, get out of here. Close the door <laughs> on your way out. It's funny, lately I've been doing my shows on Sundays and I haven't been getting those copyright claims. I think that means I'm not playing the song well enough to be identified by the algorithm. <laughs> that's, a, that's a way around it. <laughs> I meant Clay Dot. Clay Dot Random is a must. Rare in Fender history. Oh. I can't, I can't go through my electric guitars. I've got to do a video on my electric guitars and then decide which one is my favorite. Um, Aaron already showed me playing Morningstar over Staffordshire on his live stream a few weeks ago. Yeah, we want more. I want more videos of people playing songs. Isn't that what it's all about? Are you crazy? No, it's about looking at the guitar and sniffing the sound hole, not playing the thing. What's wrong with you? I like warm, muddy sounding. Would you say the nine sounds more like a muddy Gibson than a bright Martin? Yeah, if you like warm and muddy, then get the nine. To put it, <laughs> to put it, to put it bluntly. I, I, I don't like saying brighter because it's not a very good description. I wish I was as, as uh, wordy as Spoon is, but the yeah, the, the 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 seven just has with the with the Sitka and the um, mahogany just has more presence. Whatever you want to call it, treble, bright, clarity, whatever you want to call it. The nine to me, and just that particular one that I played was just warmer sounding, which is you know, certainly not a bad thing. But that's um, that's what I took away from that. So I, I'd always say try and play either here and back to back um, T or uh, try to play it. If you can't though, that's that's what I gather from that. 
Oh, the real questions now. Amulet or Anthem? But I'm still deciding, Kooky, because I've been working with both of them this week. Yeah. I really like the amulet for the body sound, nothing in the sound hole, and um, I really like the Anthem for the fact it's got that mic in there. Yeah, I don't know. They're, they are they're, both great. They're both kind of my favorites at the moment. And uh, yeah, still, I don't know. Um, once, I've, once I've done a second review of the Anthem, I'm oh, sorry, the Amulet on this D28, and then done a few more pickup reviews I've got to do, I'm going to do like a video like what I learned from reviewing 25 pickups and talk about all the pros and cons and, and things that I like. When will I try the Dazzo? They, they want me to. I don't know. I'm not in a hurry to glue a pickup into a guitar. Um, you know what I think they, I, you know what I think pickup companies should do? They should get some guitars, install the pickup really well, and ship it, out, ship it out to reviewers like me to review them. Because otherwise I've got to buy a guitar, put a pickup in there, and if it's glued in there, then I've got to sand it off the bridge play. I'm not really willing to do that anymore. Um, so I think I think that they should do something like that, and then and then they'll get more videos out there as well with a correct well, install. Maybe we have to get together on that, Aaron, and, and I'll find something here that we could uh, use as the guinea pig guitar. Yeah, oh yeah, definitely. I would definitely work that with you to do that. It's just I've done that in the past. Like I've got a guitar to try a pickup, and it's just a really bad idea. I'm, I am going to. I do owe a review to. Um, oh, my sigh. And I thought I might try and install that one myself in that Yamaha that I've got, that three hundred dollar Yamaha. I'm happy to do. I'm happy to do that. But the problem with something like the Dazzo is, I kind of want to hear that in a decent. I'm not. No, yeah. actually, not. No, but not that. Not that that Yamaha is. That Yamaha is fabulous. But I want to hear it in something like. Like I feel that people that, that buy that pickup would install that in something higher. Cost. I'm not gonna say higher end, but higher cost. No one's gonna. I, no one's gonna really buy a three, two hundred, three hundred dollar guitar and install a four hundred dollar pickup system in it, are they? I don't think that's gonna happen. So that's what I would like to hear. He says, make an amulet versus anthem video. Yes, I will. Um, yes, th th these 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 pickups have really taken me a long time to decide. But like you said, they're both great. They're both great in their own way. I've also thought about doing something like an anthem. I was talking to someone the other day about doing like an anthem and removing the sound hole controls and changing it around. I don't know. At least it'll keep me busy for a few more years, won't it? <laughs> um, buy an Eastman. I just, I just can't justify buying a guitar just to try a pickup. But if Maury wants to do something with me, because I'm sure they'll, I'm sure they'll provide the pickup for a review. I just need to get it into a guitar, and I would want that installed by them. In the same way that if you're buying a guitar from Maury, he does a great install on the trance. So that's definitely worth considering the trance if you're buying from Maury. Um, although I, I do, Kooky's going to say it's hard to install. I do know people that have installed the trance and have great results as well. But mm -hmm. Maury is very experienced in installing it, so that's a great option. But I don't know. Yeah, this, this really is a whole video series. Like what I learned from the pickups. Because what, what I have learned is... There's just a trade-off with every system. There is just nothing that's perfect. There's just yeah. nothing. It, it, and it's the same with capos and picks and everything else, right? And guitars and everything. There, there is no perfect system. But the, the trance and the, and the anthem and the Aussie guitars, of course, are all excellent systems. I also can't wait to see what comes next at like Summer Nam, like if, if Martin are going to do something new with their systems as well. So yeah, it'll certainly, certainly keep me busy, but I will do that video, Kooky. Anthem versus Trance would be kind of a cool video. Bob says, I just want to say I bought the Ditto Plus. Awesome. Where is it? It's gone. That's a great looper. I was using it today in the demo video. It's a great cool. looper. I love that Ditto Plus. Everyone should own that Ditto Plus looper. Kooky's got a compliment. Nothing beats Maury's install. Thank you. But... um. <laughs> Uh, there's there's another Aaron on the acoustic guitar forum that installed it in a Gibson. That sounds very good as well. Um, yeah, I will say that. So it's not impossible to install yourself. Um, but Maury does install the trance very well, and it's a great system. All right, yeah, um, we're going to wrap it up. We're after five thirty. Maury needs to sleep, and I need to go and fix the room. I'm very excited. <laughs> I'm going to make a video about it too. How I how I um, put the sound reflection up and this guitar stand that I've got. I'm going to make a video about. It. So stay tuned. We'll see if next week there's less echo in here because right now there's no furniture, so it's you can hear it. We'll see if next week there's less less echo or not. 
All right, my friends, thank you for your time. Thanks for joining us. Please, if you're new here, please do consider subscribing and ring the bell. Select all notifications so you're notified when I post a video or go live. And also check out Maury's channel, Maury's Music. Subscribe and ring the bell. He's got videos coming this week. Check out Spoon's work. Spoon, feel free to put your links in the chat so people can check out what you do there and, and, and read more um, awesome information from you. And uh, thanks for showing us the guitar, Maury. This guitar is for sale. Give Maury a call if you're in the USA and interested. It's a very, very nice guitar. Just make sure you've done your homework about that neck shape, and if, if that's what you want, and I highly recommend this guitar. Um, <laughs> I'll just read through the last comments. Kuki says, that was luck. Only Maury is consistent in installing the ammo. I don't agree that Aaron's actually going to install, he's actually going to install it on an OM next, so we'll see what happens with that. Um, Kuki's just saying that because he he tried to install. Oh, I'm not. That's a whole new rabbit hole. I'm not going to. <laughs> I don't usually install pickups for that reason. I would let Maury do it myself. Thank you, Aaron and Maury. Wonderful show. Thank you both. Thanks for the thumbs up. See you. Thanks, Kuki thank you. Spoon. Thank you for your your help today. Um, Roa says these are very entertaining and informative. <laughs> Bimo says ciao. Bonsoir. And Rosanna says, Rosanna says, thank you, Erin Amori. Have a great evening. Thank you, everyone. Make sure you're subscribed. Watch out for videos this week. And I'll definitely see you on Sunday for the, the, the live concert performance. And um, I, I have a lot of videos coming, so stay tuned for those. Um, and Lee says, thanks for the Colorado capo. Very welcome. One more question. Will Martin do Custom Shop 17 series? Yes. Yes. Okay, we'll leave it at that. Thanks for watching. Have a wonderful week. Next week is going to be April. Ooh, next week is the April 1st show, right? Well, it's actually April the 5th. But it's, it's, it's yeah. Watch out for April the 1st. That's on Thursday. Yeah, yeah Maury, don't go live on Thursday, okay? Oh, that's, that's Martin versus Martin. <laughs> oh, that's okay. That's I mean, good. I mean, don't do like a, don't do like a, a product demo on Thursday. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right, everyone. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Take care, be well, and um, thanks for watching. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Thanks, Aaron. Thank you. Oh, wait, wait. Finish with the joke. Next week. Ah, okay. Stay tuned. <laughs> I'm not ready. <laughs>